Whether you're a gamer slash streamer or a musician or an audio professional, at some point you've needed to get computer audio into a recording device, whether it's a soundboard, a small recorder like this, or a big PA system. In this video, I'm going to show you a smart way to do it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at getting our digital audio into a recording device. Like I said, I'm using this uh, PodTrack P4 made by Zoom. It's an awesome little recorder for podcasting and uh, live recording somewhere. But just imagine this is a, uh, a mixing board, maybe you know something like this, a small mixing board, big mixing board, maybe a PA system. And for some reason, you need to get your audio into here. Maybe you're playing some music at a party by the poolside and you want to you know, play it into some uh, powered speakers or maybe you're recording some audio, you got some backing tracks here and you're plugging in a guitar and, and vocals into a mixing board and you're recording. Or maybe you're a streamer and you've got some background music or some chat audio or some, you know, whatever, playing on a computer and you're bringing it into your other PC through some kind of a mixing board or, or even some kind of streaming device like a Rodecaster 2 Pro or something like that. Um, so for some reason you need to get the audio into here. Now, the, the easiest way probably that people think of is just to grab something like, like this, an aux cable, um, you know, eighth inch jack on this side, got another eighth inch jack on the other side, and you plug it into your computer, assuming that your computer still has a headphone jack, and then plugging this into the input of whatever your device is, maybe using some kind of an adapter to get from the eighth inch jack to maybe a quarter inch jack uh, input, then uh, you know that's that's the easiest way. Uh, another way that's very similar to that would be something like this. This is an eighth inch jack to stereo quarter inch jacks. That's going to be a little bit easier to bring right into a mixing board because most mixing boards, like this one here, have the option of both XLR and line in quarter inch jacks. So you can put those right in there, set up a stereo pair. And, uh, and get your music in that way. So those are, those are probably the, the go-to for most people. It's cheap, it's easy, um, but it has a, has a lot of problems. So the, the biggest problem probably is just the quality of this cable just allows a lot of noise, a lot of crosstalk, and you, you'll probably have some kind of staticky, you know, anytime you move the cable, it's gonna have, you know, crackly noise going through your speakers. That's not good, especially if you're recording something you definitely don't want that in there. Think about this cable here that we may pay, you know, seven to ten dollars for. It's probably manufactured for ten cents, and there's just not a lot of care put into it. Now, obviously, you can buy really expensive versions of these, and they do a lot better. But for the most part, they're unbalanced, they're unshielded, or they're very poorly shielded, shielded if any, and uh, it's just not a great way to go. So if you've ever used these kind of cables before and had any kind of audio issues, then that's probably what you're experiencing. So what's the best way to do it? Well, I'm not an audio professional. I've done a lot of recording, both uh, music and, uh, you know, computer recording over the years. Uh, I've recorded several CDs in professional studios. And uh, so I've, I've hung around the audio industry a lot. And if you're going to go with something that, that the audio pros are going to approve, then you want to have some kind of balanced audio that's going to take care of all your uh, interference and crosstalk, and it's just going to be a, a better experience. So how do we get balanced audio from this computer into this recording device? And again, I'm just using this as an example because it was easy. I'm actually talking into this right now. This is my microphone I'm talking into, and this is going right into this recording device, which is my iPad Pro. So I just use this because it's small and portable and easy to plug into and it's already got a USB driver for the iPad. So it's got four XLR jacks on here. I'm using one of them. So we're gonna use two more to set up a stereo pair coming from here. So I'm gonna show you a couple different ways, uh, two different uh, solutions to this. They're basically the same. They're just two different devices that do the same thing. One I'm gonna call the, uh, the semi-professional way to do it, and the other is gonna be kind of the, the cheap, but uh, I think it's gonna turn out just fine. It's going to be a little bit cheaper. So when when I would be recording somewhere or playing somewhere uh, live in a venue or something, maybe uh, I've got a, 
instrument that's not going to be miked. So maybe a bass guitar or something. So if you get a regular guitar, you just set up your cab, you put the mic in front of it, and that microphone goes right into the uh, into the mixing board and the soundboard. But if you get a bass guitar, maybe you're not uh, miking the bass rig. You're coming right out of the, the bass head, and you'd use something called a direct box. And the direct box is just going to take that signal coming out of the bass head or even right out of your bass guitar and send it to the mixing board. So this is what this is, a USB to audio direct box. So this is made by... I'm going to pronounce it Copool. I don't know. I'm not sure really. But it's uh, a USB to audio direct box. It says output computer audio to a PA system or mixer. That's exactly what I said this video was going to be about. It's got two balanced XLR three pin outputs. On this one, we can switch from stereo to mono. And I'll show you what that means. And it's going to operate right on USB bus power. And it's rugged metal construction. So that's why I'm calling this the semi professional version. So let's take take this out and see what it looks like. So inside the box, we've got the direct box itself. And yes, this thing is built well. This is solid metal case here. We've got our USB on one side. Here's our stereo mono switch. We get our XLR on the other side. It came with a USB cable and then a little instruction book. And the instruction book is nice. It's doesn't, it, you know, it's a pretty easy device to use, but it does show some configurations of how you'd be using this. Here's a you know PC going straight to some powered speakers or a PA system. Here's a PC going through a mixing board into a recording device. So it shows you exactly how to use it. But like I said, it's pretty easy. We're gonna hook this up USB into the computer. Um, it's basically gonna become an external sound card. So it, it's gonna be coming an a, a sound output for the computer. And then we're gonna send the signal right over some XLR cables, which you could run these things, you know, two or three feet, or you could run them 50 feet, and you're not going to have any kind of signal problem with them. So we're going to send that right into our mixing board or recording device, and then we're going to be able to get the audio right into here. So let's get this thing set up. All right, so I got this thing all hooked up here, and sorry about the cable mess, but here's the uh, direct box again. I've got two XLR cables here going into channel three and four of this uh, Zoom track or Zoom P4. And I've got this plugged in over the USB port over here. And basically it just becomes an audio output. So if we look at just clicking on the little speaker icon down here, you can see now it says speakers, USB audio device. If I went into the Windows settings, then it would say the same thing. I'd have the option of actually playing out of you know, the laptop itself or this USB audio device. And that's exactly what the, uh, the instruction said it was gonna be called, USB audio device. This works on both Windows and on Mac. It's gonna come up the same way. It's just gonna be an audio output called USB audio device. So now that we've got that set up, um, I've got them plugged right into here as uh, inputs, like I said, three and four stereo channels. So if I hit play on here, and this is uh, Stream Beats by Harris Heller, and uh, that way I can play his awesome music that he's given to streamers without being uh, striked on uh, YouTube for copyright. So let's go ahead and hit play. And if everything worked right, you should be able to hear that. And we can take these channels here, three and four. And turn them up individually. And you can see just a little bit here on the, uh, the output, you can see it coming in. Here's my channel one, and then as we turn up three and four, you can see them coming up also. So that's gonna be just as good as you can get. Of course, going from digital audio inside here, converting it analog or digital to analog out of this guy here, that's the magic that's happening inside here and then coming out as balanced audio coming into here. The only other thing that you can do better than that is just going digital straight into here, which some of the new digital mixers will let you do, and that's always an option. But if you've got some device that, uh, that doesn't have that input-wise, then this is gonna be the best way to do it. So let's take a look at the, uh, the stereo to mono ability of this guy also. All right, so I've taken the box here and I've switched it from stereo to mono. And what that does is it basically takes the full stereo mix from the USB and puts it out both of these as mono. 
So you can send this one to a recorder, you can send the other one to a PA, or you can just use one to sum it up onto one channel. So right now we're just coming in off of one channel. You can see I've unplugged the other one. So we're only coming in right here on channel four, but you're still getting the full mix of left and right channels. So that's handy if you have two different places to go, or if you only have one single input on your, uh, on your device, then uh, you can sum it all up to a, a mono stereo channel. So now that we've seen what this guy can do, let's see what I'm gonna call the, the, the cheaper way to do it and see if it works just as well. All right, so what we're gonna show next here is this basically all in one cable. It's a USB on one side, two XLRs on the other side, and uh, I don't know, a couple feet of, of cable in between. And all the digital to analog conversion is done inside a chip inside here. And according to the specs, you know, the spec sheet, it's supposed to be as good of uh, signal to noise ratio as the, uh, the direct box was. But we're just going to go ahead and plug it in and, and check it out and see how this works. I got this on Amazon. I don't know, it's 20, 30 bucks or something like that. Um, the other box, the direct box I got on B&H, and it was uh, considerably more than that. So let's see if this cheaper alternative is going to do uh, a good job for us. Maybe we just need this, you know, one or two times. Maybe we just need to save some money on it. Let's see if this does the job. All right, so this is purely just plug and play. I just plug this thing right into the USB port. This cable is about eight to 10 feet long. Um, I've got most of it hidden back behind there because it is uh, quite long. And it just comes out to a stereo pair here of XLRs, just like the direct box. So I'm using the same cables plugged in, coming into channel three and four here. And when it popped up in here, it's called USB USB plug and play audio device. So it, it found it right away. Didn't have to, you know, down, I didn't have to go and download any drivers for it. Just plugged it in, it popped up. It became the default automatically and it's ready to play. So I'm gonna hit play on this and let's hear it through uh, channel three and four. So same thing, it's coming straight in. And because it's basically like line drive audio, um, it can get quite loud. So I've got it turned way down on the output settings here, just so you can still hear my microphone over the top of the music. But uh, it's coming in, it's coming in great. Now this one, the only difference is this one doesn't have an option of going mono. So if I do unplug one of these, I'm gonna lose half my audio, you know, how, however they have this mixed. So it will take uh, two channels going in. There's no, you know, switch to switch it from, uh, from mono to stereo and back. So that's the one downside of this one, but if you've got two channels to come into a, a soundboard, then that's gonna be perfect. Same thing would happen if you were using, again, like this type of device here, no switch on this. You'd have to have two inputs for your left and right. So I think this is a good solution. It's, uh, again, cheap for what it is. I'd rather spend, you know, maybe 30 bucks for this than 10 or 12 for this and have a lot better quality audio. So I'm really happy, really impressed with both of these devices. Uh, let me tell you real quick uh, why I even looked into them in the first place. So I was setting up a, kind of a, a two PC streaming setup here at home. And uh, I was literally taking, you know, like a 10 foot version of one of these coming out of the sound card on the back of a gaming PC and routing it all the way across, you know, a, the desk 10 feet later into a uh, mixing board and it, it was just sounding like garbage and it was every time I moved anything on the desk you could hear it crackle so that was just it was just a pain in the butt so having these XLR cables having a USB dedicated sound card output to be able to route that with and with Windows 10 it's easy to route a single program over to a different sound card output um, it just made it a no-brainer so this is, this is awesome. Again, I'm showing you just a simplified version of this going into this little PodTrack P4, but this could work into a, a huge mixing board. It could work into you know, any kind of uh, podcast setup you have or live stream setup that you've got. So thanks again to Harris Heller for his awesome music. Uh, I'll leave a, a link below in the description 
to both his uh, stream beats on YouTube and to his YouTube channel. He's a great resource for any kind of uh, streaming knowledge. I've learned a lot from him, so uh, go check out his channel as well. That's going to wrap it up for this. If you have any questions about this setup, uh, let me know down in the comments below. And uh, I know that I don't usually do audio type stuff on this channel. This is more of a, a geeky channel for gaming computer type stuff, but this is uh, kind of it fit right into the gaming computer streaming type setup avenue. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. But thank you as always for watching these videos. If you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If this helped you at all, I appreciate that thumbs up always. And until next time, peace out and geek out.